What is up everybody? Mr. Purtis here. Welcome to our DBQ explanation, the DBQ that you wrote on May 7th. And this is actually a DBQ from the AP World exam. I believe it's 2018 if I'm not mistaken. Um, that DBQ had seven documents in it. I took two of them out, um, two of the ones that went past the 1900 uh, time period. But here we are. So just a quick reminder on the question. And I just want to go through a process of like what I would do if I were you while taking this. And I'm not sure what you did while you were writing it, but just to kind of um, help you out in the, in the process of timing and whatnot. So first, this question is evaluate the extent to which railroads affected the process of empire building in Afro-Eurasia from 1860 to 1900. Once I see these dates, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try, I'm going to push aside the review sheets that I have that don't connect to this time period. So because this, if this, if this question was 1750 to 1900, I would keep my 1450 to 1750 review sheets and my 1750 to 1900 review sheets out because I would assume that that 1450 to 1750 period could help with contextualization. So I would get rid of the first two review sheets, which is 1200 to 1450. However, this question is right in the middle of a time period. So I'm going to assume that the 1750 to 1860, the first half of this time period, could be helpful in contextualization. So I'm going to assume that review sheets 1, 2, 3, and 4 can go off to the side. And again, review sheets 3 and 4 are 1450 to 1750. And we'll get into like contextualization in a second. But I just want to tell you what I would do just to make sure you're not too cluttered and aren't sorting through papers and whatnot. Um, in terms of this doc, the DBQ, I'm going to just kind of highlight a couple of things as we go through this. I'm not going to read through every document word for word, but just kind of highlight some stuff to trigger in your memory what you read because it's been a couple of days at this point. So this is a Qing Dynasty official. He is an advocate for domestic reform. So he is advocating reform. Remember, this is a time period of reform and reaction. And it's a memo to the Qing court, which is the Qing Dynasty, the emperor and his officials in 1867. Um, and essentially saying, what should we do about telegraphs and railroads? We built the Great Wall. And if we build these railroads and telegraphs, China will be great. It'll help um, the poor people. And uh, we just essentially what he says is we need to be careful with Westerners coming in and telling us what to do. We have to make sure it's on our terms. So in terms of if I was writing this, if I'm taking notes on this, I would say I would essentially argue that the Qing government should build that. What he's saying is he's arguing that the Qing government should build railroads and will benefit but should not do so um, by giving concessions to Western companies unless they meet strict criteria. Basically saying, we'll let the Westerners come in and help us, but they have to follow what we're saying because of what's going on in the world. Um, in terms of just hipping this, one thing I would say is there's definitely historical context here. This is 1867. This is post-Opium War. Um, China's just been brutalized by the West in this opium war. So they're being very cautious here of Western interests. So that's a historical context. I didn't even put that here for the hip, but just want to point that out. That's a historical context. Um, the purpose of this document, what I would say is, and I would, I would literally just keep it simple. This isn't like high quality writing here. I'm just trying to help you get through this. I would say the purpose of this document was um, he wanted to modernize China and convince the Qing court to implement these programs to Im improve the country. That's what he's doing. And that's his hip. Um, you could say perspective of the author. He is a Qing official who is requiring strict standards in order to maintain power of the Qing with respect to the West. He's not saying, hey, let's bring in anyone from the West in here and like, let's just let them do what they want. Because if he does that, he's a Qing official. And if the West comes in and imperializes, he's going to lose his power. All three of those hips would work. Um, you could also have something else that might work as well. But those are the three that I'm rolling with. Um, this is an Ottoman government report concerning the proposal to build a railway from Damascus to Mecca, 1893. Um, and this is basically going through, say, um, they either, if Muslims want to go on the pilgrimage to Mecca, they have to use foreign ships. They're subjected to humiliation by the Westerners or travel by camel. And obviously a camel, going by camel is not the ideal way at this point in the late 1800s. Um, we need a railway to the region. That's what he's saying. Our sultan must personally lead in this highly significant undertaking. Uh, Muslims across the world hold our sultan in very high regard. The meaning of this is they need to they need to construct a railroad that's going to aid Muslims by traveling to holy cities and increase the prestige of the Muslim sultan around the world. The hip that I had. Now again, you could do historical context here. There's a lot of different ways to go about this. I would say intended audience or purpose is a good one here. I would say the intended audience is. Um, by reading this, you know the intended audience is the sultan. He's saying our sultan. So he's talking about the sultan. Um, and he's trying to convince the sultan to construct a railroad by flattering him. He's saying everyone holds you in high regard. I mean, that's right there. He's flattering him. It's like 
If someone says to the president of the United States, President Trump, you are amazing. I love you so much. Let's do this thing. The idea is that by flattering someone, you're going to be more likely to do it, especially a leader. Historical context. This is written during the tan, like after the Tanzimat reforms were canceled out. They need reforms and these are, this is encouraging reforms. So the historical context, it's written in the time when the Ottomans were losing power to the West and they need these reforms in order to maintain their prestige around the world. Um, this is a petition in, in, petition in English to the British colonial government from, of India, from the British Indian Association. Um, it's an organization consisting of high caste Indians. So in 1866, we're talking high caste, um, and they're writing this to the British colonial government. So, and essentially what it's saying is, um, I won't read this one all the way through that they're basically saying high caste it, Hindus are subject to abuse from European passengers. So they're riding on the same train. So we're talking upper class Hindus are riding with British on the same train and the Europeans aren't treating them well. Um, and when they're forced to go into the second class carriages, which is beneath these high class Hindus, um, they're forced to interact with the low caste people and they have issue with that. There's also uh, a mention in here of women's respectability being jeopardized. That could work as well in terms of just the meaning. Um, in terms of the hip, we got the purpose. I would say the purpose of this is a petition. Um, he's petitioning specifically to the English government to change a policy, and therefore it is offering complaints on what issues they see. What does a petition do? You don't say, oh, we love this place. It's great. It's fantastic. No, you complain about everything, and that's the hip because the purpose is to complain. Um, perspective of the author, these are high-class Hindus, and they're complaining to the British about failing to follow tradition, which is important to their social status as high class Hindus. This is not from low class Hindus or low caste Hindus. Um, so it's an important perspective. It's important to recognize that and see how it impacts the message in the document. Um, this is an English politician. He's writing an editorial, which is a key piece to this, discussing the Trans-Siberian Railroad. Hopefully everyone remembers the Trans-Siberian Railroad traversed Good word across the Siberian uh, plains from one end of Russia essentially to the other end of Russia um, as Russia was expanding and it's saying um, the steps will be slow the railroad could be used to transport massive soldiers so we're kind of going through some of the ways that this would help that would help uh, Russia loss, launch an attack now this is not a Russian person this is an English politician talking about what could happen as a result of this um, and if England kind of just is watching off the side and he's arguing the Trans-Siberian Railroad will allow Russia to, uh, Russia to dominate East Asia unless other European powers protect their interests. This is 1901. We're right towards the end of this kind of peak of imperialism going on in terms of going out and conquering places. So that's a historical context. There's a lot of competition between Britain and Russia and Central Asia. And what is Russia going to become a power? Um so that's going on. In terms of the purpose, the purpose of this document is trying to influence the public and government. It's an editorial. Editorials are naturally biased in terms of trying to convince people um, and the government by criticizing the British in action. He's basically saying Britain's not doing anything and we should. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. Um, that's the hip. If you're not noticing here, I'm really trying to focus on the hip because I know it's the hardest thing for people to grasp and people are so close to it. Um, and I just wanted you to see what you're doing versus what I'm saying and what I'm saying should be good enough to get you the point. Let me bring my face down here off this map. Um, this is a Cape to Cairo railway and roads. And if you didn't know Cecil Rhodes, um, he had a country named Rhodesia named after him until they switched the name because they didn't want it named after an imperialist. Um, and this is the proposed railway. So this is an article that's illustrated in the Auckland Weekly News, a paper published in British New Zealand. New Zealand is not in Africa. All right, New Zealand's on a different part of the world. It's over by Australia. Um, so that's kind of just a side note to this and something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, and this, the meaning of this is that it's showing a proposed railway advocated by the Imperial Cecil Rhodes to connect Cairo all the way up here, all the way down with Cape Town. And it's going to cut through most of the British territories with that scramble for Africa. That'd be a good, very good outside piece of evidence here connecting the scramble for Africa and the British controlling so many territories um, with this. So my historical context is this is published during the is 1899. Again, coming back here, I would use pretty much the same historical context here as here. Um, 1899, we're at the peak, just past the peak of imperialism and um, European expansion to Africa um, is going on. That's important. The intended audience, we're looking at British officials. All right. Um, or New Zealand residents because it's published in the newspaper in New Zealand in an attempt to highlight how great, um, 
how great Britain is and all this great stuff that British is doing in order to instill pride in the British Empire. Um, this, I don't like this for hip. I would probably have skipped this one. I'm not really a fan of this document at all, but that's just me. In terms of the groupings, how I would group it, you could have grouped it different. I would have went one and two show, which is coming back here. We're looking at this one with the Chinese official and this Ottoman one showing uh, greater or increased support for the government. So by building these railways in terms of empire building, it will increase support for the government. All right. Remember the Sultan is saying, or the, the writing, but from the, is saying the Sultan will have more prestige and power. And then the, um, Qing court official is comparing it to the Great Wall, one of these great events in Chinese history or great, um, achievements. In terms of three and four, I'm looking at this one from the high caste Indians who are saying, who are angry about this. And, um, this one with the Trans Siberian Railroad showing that Russia is going to increase their power. And I'm going to say it's going to lead to increased conflict. So this, Attempt to build these railroads and empire building is going to lead to greater conflict. And then this one right here is kind of my throwaway doc. Again, I wouldn't use this. A lot of people jump on the um, the images because it's easy. You don't have to read anything. But sometimes they're the hardest to do. I would make this its own grouping. And remember, I always say just use all five documents if you have time just to use them because why not just use them? Like you, they're there. If you mess one up, at least you got this. Like you got a little buffer zone. I would say this just shows connection between regions that by building railroads, it connects regions together that wouldn't have been connected before. So that's my three groupings in terms of contextualization, go, taking a step back. Remember, I said this this starts at 1860, this DVQ. It's about the uh, impact of railroads on empire building, but it doesn't tell you anything about railroads, where they come from, what time period they're part of, all that good stuff. So I would jump back. What I would have done was European industrialization led to new inventions. Those new inventions were steel related and um, in terms of engine, steam engine, and that led to the invention of the railroads. Boom. That's it. Three sentences, maybe four. Um, you could do something on European imperialism if you want. You could talk about reforms by non-Western countries to industrialize that reform reaction period that we talked about in class. Or you could also do something, I mean, connecting with this, maybe um, a little opium wars and Europeans going out and expanding. Um, if you use something like that in contextualization, you cannot double dip it for your outside evidence. In terms of thesis, some people, a couple people are still struggling with the thesis. So pay attention how easy this is. I'm going to come back here real quick. This is our question. Evaluate the extent to which railroads affected the process of empire building and average Eurasia from 1860 to 1900. Watch this. I'm taking that question. I'm flipping it from 1860 to 1900. Railroads affected the process of empire building. That is straight from the question. I'm just rewording and phrasing it. And then I'm going to tell you my three groups through increased support for the government and connection between regions while also leading to greater conflict. Some of you, a couple are still doing. It was the impact of process really through positive and negative effects. Not good. Don't do positive and negative. Get that out of your mind or neutral. Nah, uh, uh, it's not going to work. You're not going to get the point here. Um, so we want to make it so it's specific. These are my positives. So I could say positive effects of increased support and connection between regions while also a negative effect of leading to greater conflict. But notice I'm more specific than just positive and negative. So that's where we want to go. Last but not least, outside evidence. Some of you are just giving me like one little sentence and or some of you are like, well, the Great Wall protected people from Mongol invaders. That doesn't help you answer about the process of empire building and railroads. Your outside evidence needs to focus on that. How is empire, how are the empires building up as a result of railroads? Okay. And it needs to connect to that railroad empire building. I would say any reform and reaction stuff would have been money maker on this self strengthening movement, Tanzimat reforms, emancipation of the serfs and building of the trans Siberian railroad in 1861 in Russia. Um, you could have connected Japan. There's no document on Japan here. And there's a ton of information on Japan in the Meiji restoration, bringing in the West to help them industrialize that would have connected in terms of unifying people together. So you're bringing in outside fact, Japan, that's not in the documents that could help it. Um, Japan building railroads with up European, you could have connected Indian and the high caste Hindus forming the Indian national Congress as railroads connected people. Some, a uh, couple people mentioned transnational companies in Latin America, which was very excellent um, in terms of U.S. building railroads in these regions. Scramble for Africa, like I mentioned with document five. And then the British Empire seeking to connect other large territories on different continents, transporting goods, um, building these railroads to, in order to increase production. That's a lot of stuff. Um, read through your own DBQ. See how you fit in this. I could only give so many comments on the DBQ because 
I, it's just it would take me two weeks to get these back to you so this is kind of my video tutorial overview all that good stuff i'll do another one of these for the dbq that we do this coming thursday um and that's what I got. You got any questions, email me, let me know, right? Whatever. You know what, how to find me. I'm out.